Hello friends, today I'm going to show you how to use factory method pattern in an API. And using that, we will try to create some records. Uh, we will receive that record as well. Uh, not using the factory pattern to receive the record, but to create the record, yes, we will use the factory pattern. Uh, let me show you some example like how it works. So this is the API which is running here. Now, API patient, this one is uh, going to create a record for me. And uh, let's start by doing some examples. So you can see that I have only one record. Now I'm going to set another record. Let's say John. Things and his age is, let's say, 14 years. So it's recorded with an ID6 and uh, he's the casual patient and he's listed as a minor because uh, we listed his age as less than 18. Uh, so that's how uh, the record is sent to the database and it's received by the database and we are using factory pattern to do those things. Now, uh, I'll give you a brief of how things are working and uh, how we create that API. Let's stop this execution and start with our API. So I select ASP.NET and core web API. Next, I give it a name. Select the location. I set it as .NET 6, not an HTTPS. Create. As I create, I see that there is a blank page and a blank controller uh, with weather forecast controller in it. So I will add a controller named uh, patient controller and this is an api controller patients all right so now we have our controller and that's inheriting controller base i'll not take the controller base because i'm going to work with json data which is uh, going to work uh, with uh, controller class. Uh, I'll set the connection string in the app settings.json. Now, after the connection string, I will have uh, the classes. So I will have a few more folders. Um, right click on the project, add a folder named data. Add new folder named models. And uh, I think uh, DP context is here. Yeah. OK, so uh, let me add the model classes. OK, uh, guys, now we have all the class files that was required. So I created one concrete folder and I have uh, uh, three values in it to return. So uh, this is the casual patient. This is the casual patient class and I have uh, inherited it from the iPatient, that's the interface. So iPatient is the interface and you can see it here it has uh, four, five parameters. One is the first name, last name, age, address and uh, type. So the first name is taking a parameter of type F name and a string parameter. Last name is taking a string parameter. Age is taking an integer parameter and address is taking a string parameter. The type will return us from the factory that what type of uh, patient is it. So that will be processed in the concrete classes. So you can see that uh, I'm using three classes, outpatient, inpatient, and casual patient. Okay, all have the same fields. Oh, I forgot to... All of them have the same fields. So the purpose of creating a factory pattern is to have a, a decentralized architecture, or you can say a distributed architecture. And you can see that my patient factory class is returning three types of values. One is inpatient, outpatient, and casual patient. Uh, this is returning uh, the concrete classes that we have uh, created. So here are the three concrete classes we have. and. Uh, uh, the patient.cs, we created this as a model. Uh, this one would be used to fetch data, uh, re receive and record data. Uh, and uh, 
we have two interfaces one is the primary interface and another one is a secondary so i prime i patient is the primary interface and this one will be uh, this one will be used inside the secondary interface that is i create obj you can see this one and uh, that's creating an object of the primary patient i patient okay and it will use uh, within the flow so just um, before processing everything a quick review of what we are going to do here factory method pattern in a web api first of all we create an api using an api controller inherit from the controller class install the required nuget packages configure the connection string in the app settings.json file add the required model class and configure it in the db in the db context file configure the program.cs class with the required dependency injection create the primary interface that will be inherited from the con concrete class Create the secondary interface that will be create an object of the primary interface. Create the concrete classes that will inherit the primary interface and they will implement it. Now lastly, create the factory class with uh, inheriting the secondary interface and return all the types of concrete classes. Now next, return to the API controller class and instantiate the DB context or initialize the DB context class with dependency injection. And finally, have two methods or action methods. So one is an HTTP post action, which will accept all the parameters and create the objects and uh, record the data create an object of the primary and secondary interface and record the data and now finally call the required factory with switch cases by passing the required factory type and uh, get access to the database so back to our program uh, we see that we have set up uh, all the things the db context class i didn't show you the db context class inherits it's the name as application db context and uh, inherits from the db context and that's in entity framework core did I show you the did I show you the NuGet packages that we installed? Okay, so entity framework core is inside this package uh, that we installed. Entity framework core dot tools dot server diagnostics dot entity framework core and slash buckle by default it's uh, created. Okay. So these are the NuGet packages that we are installing. After installing all of them, uh, we set up the program.cs class as well. So program.cs here isn't set up on my end. Let me set that up. So looking at the program.cs, we would need, uh, uh, I tried doing uh, a dependency injection, but uh, didn't work. So we can't use that one here. So these are the services that we require. Application DB context is uh, matched with the connection string that we are passing. Okay. So that is also initialized inside the program.cs, or you can say the program's middleware. And we try to do dependency injection with all the uh, factory interfaces, uh, or factory concrete classes with the interface, but didn't work. So, guys, there was a failure program as well. If I might show you, there is a failure program which tried to uh, return different types of uh, values, but it didn't work properly. So, factory method could not be used there because factory method works with similar type of data. Like if you have human beings and animals, then you should have eyes, nose, body parts, similar body parts. Okay. So now what happens is uh, this inpatient, the outpatient and casual patient, all of them are using the same type of characteristic features. All of them have an address, an age, first name, last name and the type. Okay. So the one that I was playing around with was having different values. Okay. If you look at the factory, uh, so the outpatient was having different parameters. The inpatient was having different parameters and uh, that did not work. Okay. So the surgery, a bed has casualty. These are the things that were I was trying, but it wasn't, it couldn't work because we need similar kind of values to make it work. So that was a failure. So now moving ahead, uh, we will see that the program.cs class is uh, set up. Let's try to run that and see if everything is fine. I have got two records in my database. I'm going to add another one and check if uh, everything is going well. I will not need this one anymore. Okay, for one reason I need it. All right, while it opens up, okay, it did. Let's try to post data. Perfect. It went through. Okay, so the, my program is all good. So everything is working as expected. Let's see if we hit the database. Yes, we did. Okay, let's uh, have a look around at the 
controller class. You can see that we created an object of the DB context by dependency injection. And we have two action methods. One is set patient and one is get patient. So set patient is taking four, five parameters and it has created two objects. One is of the uh, secondary interface and one is of the primary interface. Then uh, P type would be declared depending upon the type of uh, patient we are sending into the set patient method as a parameter. And uh, we will take it uh, if it's like one, two or three, we will take it accordingly. Now this one is calling the patient factory dot casual patient. The case two is calling patient factory dot inpatient and accordingly third one is calling the outpatient. So if you look at the patient factory, you can see that there are three uh, options. So if, for example, we want another option, how would we manage that? Well, we need to have another class, another factory object, and we would call another instance inside the switch case. So three things we have to do. For example, we want an emergency patient. So I will have to create another class inside the concrete classes. I will have another class that is a casual patient. And I will list all those details that's required for a casual patient. And I will return uh, the out the return type of that one as a casual patient. And I will add a reference to this inside the factory pattern or in the factory class. Okay, Here I will have another instance of, uh, say, um, emergency patient. And then I will uh, call it inside the switch case with another case, suppose case three, as patient factory one dot casual patient factory, and that would work fine. Okay, now this program is self-explanatory. You can see that the object of uh, uh, primary patient, a uh, primary interface, is assigned the object of the secondary interface, and uh, then we are using the object of the primary interface to receive the data of the factory object. So OBGI patient is the object of the primary interface and it's fetching us the first name, that's the concrete classes first method, the second method, the age and the address and it's receiving it accordingly and saving that data as it's passing on with the model class object and it's saving the data. It, it gives us to read that as well. So the gate one will also do the similar kind of thing but the, it doesn't have a it doesn't have an implementation of uh, the factory pattern. So it's simply to fetch the data uh, using an API. So if you work around here and I try to get uh, an API value, let's say the fifth record, it will give me the details of that record and it's fetching that using the entity framework and you can see that this is the data, okay? So uh, yeah, for a few more steps we are going to do here, let's stop the program and let's divide the program as far as we can. Okay, now everything is within their folders. The concrete folder is having all concrete classes. I used a patient class. This was for dependency injection, but it did not work properly because uh, there is only one interface and it's used by three different uh, factory or three different uh, uh, concrete classes. So it was a problem like which concrete class to call on which uh, request. Okay, we cannot decide that. That's why it uh, created a problem with dependency injection. I did not use that. So. Let's divide them. Let's have another add new project. Okay, right click on the solution, add new project that will use a class library. Next, let's say this one is going to be the business logic or BL class library. .NET 6, create that. Now, next we will have our data layer class library. So that will have another new project class library next and this is going to be bl class library yes and we will have another one that is the factory class library now let's say uh, send values to them okay the concrete uh, i'll have a little cheat sheet here The concrete folder and the interface goes to the business logic. To the business logic, so I will move the concrete and the interface. Both of them moved. Then uh, data, of course, it would have my model class and my uh, app DB or the DB context inside the data access layer. Now factory will have all the factories.
All right, everything is listed now. Let's um, have references. So the main factory will have references to all of them. So let's add references. OK, so it has all the references here. Now, um, let's see where is the issue. OK, factory pattern, uh, the factories class. OK, this is the secondary interface. Uh, yeah, I could say this is the secondary interface, and it needs uh, iPatient. So iPatient is uh, inside the interface business class. So let's create a reference to business class, data layer class. Give them reference. Give it reference to both. It's gone. Now the models. Let's see if we have any problem here. We do not have any issues. Data. Do we have any problem? No. Oh, okay. So we have some problem here in the data, but why? Uh, I will have project reference. Tentative framework. Okay, okay. I got it. Well, it does not need a. It has problems with the entity framework core. So we need to install the NuGet. Okay. So as uh, this was divided, this one did not get the entity framework core, and this one is a problem with DB context, right? So DB context is inside my. Wait, wait, wait. DB context is inside the data access layer. All right, now it's all gone. It's all gone. Okay, so let's check the interface if everything is good there. That's good. Concrete classes, is everything good there? All of them is good. Okay, so now we have created how many layers? Four different layers. One is having the controllers. Okay. And uh, the others are having all the different uh, things, the factories, the data, the models, the concrete classes, the interfaces. Okay, So the interface, I think I create object should go into the interface. Both the primary and the secondary should stay here. We're all good. Let's try running the program and see this once again. Swagger came up, which means things are all going good, I think. Now, the first name, let's say, uh, let's say that is, um, Jenny, Addison, that's aged 93. So this is a senior patient, okay? Address, let's say, London. Patient type is, let's say, two. Yep, recorded. So that's an inpatient, okay? And let's see. Perfect. Now let's try to retrieve the seventh record. Perfect. We got the record. So that's how it works. And uh, you can see this. Everything is running good well here. I'll close the previous one. So you can see that uh, what we did here, we created all those classes, uh, the concrete classes. We created the interfaces, the primary and the secondary interface. Then uh, we inherited the primary interface inside the concrete classes. Uh, not this one, this one. OK, so if we inherited the primary interface there. Then we made processing inside the uh, string age. And uh, we returned three different categories of that uh, in all of them. And then uh, we created the secondary interface, which has uh, an, a method of type first interface. Then we called all of them inside the factory patent, the patient factory class. OK, I tried taking the database here. It did not work. OK, so. Yeah, we inherited the object of the secondary class everywhere, and we returned that type of factory. And finally, we are using all of them inside the patient's controller. Okay. I'll put the uh, codes into the GitHub and put this in the details section. You can fetch it from there. I hope you understood how we did this. And this was a layered architecture. Hope this works for you as well. Until we have our next set of videos, till then, stay tuned, stay connected, and happy coding. Thank you.